Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to educate and inform the viewer about technology and technology-related topics. Today, we're going to be bringing you another video about Raspberry Pi Proxmox install. This video is going to be about how to get a container working on your newly installed Proxmox server using a Raspberry Pi. So this was a little bit more challenging than previous container setups using a standard AMD64 setup of Proxmox. And there were some reasons to it. Most of them being that Proxmox was not originally designed for an ARM processor. And both containers and VMs require you to use ARM software, not AMD64 software. So I spent a good amount of time yesterday after getting my Proxmox install on my Raspberry Pi working and creating the video for you, researching both VMs and containers. I did actually get one VM working, but I am not happy with that process yet. Tonight I was able to get a container working that I feel very comfortable showing you how to use. There still might be problems that I have not discovered yet, and I apologize for that. We're really at the breaking edge of Pymox 7, as the developer of the script that we use likes to call this. So, with that, let me show you the first form post where I actually got some information. Scrolling through this form post here, I was able to find this script talking about where to actually get an image for ARM64. When following this script, which I actually set up in a separate container on my main Proxmox server to run, we get some error messages. Now, I tried doing some editing here to remove this US because I did find up here that we were able to actually get some success with that. We'll get more to this here in a minute. But then some redirects happen and we get into some more problems. So then I was able just to take the URL here and kind of work my way through it with a web browser. New tab. Copy. So we're able to find this right here. Now by continuing to look through things, we end up finding that we can put a slash images at the end. And we're able to get this list of files. Now this should all be containers that we're able to run. I have not tried out many of these containers, and I don't know if all of them are ARM compliant. This website that we're getting them from is the actual LXC or LXD website, where you download and learn more about the core component that creates the containerization feature inside of Proxmox. Watch some of our other videos about LXD and LXC to learn more about that. Anyways, then I followed my way through Ubuntu. And you can see here where there's actually two of these that I opened. My first try was with this link here. As I worked my way through it, I actually found out that this is Ubuntu 21.10. And as I have learned from trying to use Ubuntu 21.10 on Proxmox, it is not an LTS support, and Proxmox actually stops us from being able to use it. And I got an error message of exactly that, that it was an unsupported container image, an unsupported version, when I tried to work my way through it. So I backed up to January and opened this one. Now I chose ARM64, and I chose to use cloud. Then I used the latest file upload here. And then I again referred back to that person's script, and I find out 
that he is downloading the roots fs.tar.xy file. So I went ahead and downloaded that file right here. Now the file downloaded quite quickly and let's just drag it off onto my desktop and I wanted to call it something a little better so I knew what it was. So I originally called it Ubuntu as you can see right here. But we're going to call this something different so you can track my process. So I called it Ubuntu 2 this time. So now head over to our Proxmox server. I then tried to actually use this upload feature here to upload the image. Now as I browse to my desktop, you can see it's grayed out. It won't allow us to upload the image. I'm not quite sure why, but I believe it has something to do with the actual file extension. So you can see here on this AMD64 container template that I tried to run in hopes that it would actually work because the container doesn't use the actual kernel file from an operating system, it uses the host kernel file that it says .tar.gz. So I think it's something to do with that. I don't know exactly. But anyways, so to work around this problem, I went over to my terminal here and I used the SCP command to actually upload the file. Now, here's the full command I used. I'm going to make a tweak here and then I'm going to show you a little bit more about how I discovered the file directory here that I'm scrolling over that works for uploading the template. So this is where you want to upload the template to. With that, I discovered that information here, again, looking at this script right here. I just copied that location and I went to SCP and I tried to upload it. And right here you can see that I'm using my Pi user account and we just uploaded it. But if you view up here in this log, you can see I actually got a permission denied. The way I fixed that permission denied was to open the shell here for my Proxmox server and I ran a chmod777 which unlocks all permissions for all users for this file. That is a little bit of a security risk and you might want to actually create a group for your Pi user and apply group permissions to this file so your Pi user can upload to that. But I was kind of in a hurry and I don't consider this Raspberry Pi version of Proxmox 7 a production setup in any shape or form and I don't leave it running very long. So I just decided to accept that security risk and used 777. Now, as you can see, from the SCP command using pi, then followed by my server address, here if I extend this out you can see it a little better. So SCP, location of my file, my case desktop, then space, username, Pi comes from the original setup user account at IP address of the Proxmox server, colon, and then this address that we were able to remove from the script. Then enter, enter your password that you gave during the setup for your Pi user. If you didn't change it during the initial setup, it'll be Raspberry, and then we can upload the file. So now, Going back to our server and refreshing, you can see Ubuntu 2 now shows up here. Now for creating the actual container inside of Proxmox. We're going to create. Proxmox gives us the node and ID as always. We'll fill out a password here like we always do. We're going to run it unprivileged. Next. We'll select local, select our image, 
Size, I don't know how much how big your SD card is, but I'm going to turn this down to 4 gigs to help myself. CPU, 1, you got up to 4 on your Raspberry Pi, so I would suggest using 2. I have read that odd numbers of cores sometimes create problems. Memory, I'm going to leave it 512. Especially my particular Pi being a 2 gig, this is important that I don't run out of memory. Now, I don't want to mess around with static, but you could enter static here if you chose. I'm going to choose DHCP. And you can notice our bridge. If you followed my tutorial, you'll already have that bridge. If you didn't, you'll have to go in and create a bridge and get that working. Now DNS, all mine set up, and we're going to finish. Now this process is a little more lengthy than what you would expect on your standard x86 or AMD64 Proxmox server. But it does indeed complete if you allow it to. So the container has finished its creation process. So now let's exit this screen. And here's the container we made. Now all that's left to do is start it up and begin working with it. Again, on the Raspberry Pi, it tends to be a little bit slow doing things. Now we can go ahead, click on console, and hopefully it'll log in. I've had a few times where it gave me error messages and I just had to retry the console in order to get in. And again, this is a little bit slow. It is a Raspberry Pi after all. Failed. This is what we get. All I do is exit out and I come back and I try to connect again. We'll probably connect this time as this white dot has showed up. There we go. Now we can log in just as we would any other container. Root and the password we set up during the container creation process. So now I'll do the same thing that we do at the start of every other project just to demonstrate that this is a working container. We can run the update command just like we would do in any other project. There you have it. There is a working container, an Ubuntu working container, running on a Proxmox server that is hosted on Raspberry Pi hardware. As always, if you would like to support Virtualize Everything in their endeavor to bring you educational content, please consider viewing our web store at store.virtualizeeverything.com. As always, have a good night.